everything. So I give them a great thing that they did and then I give them the not so great thing. Then I finish with something great and then I talk about something else I'd like them to fix. And then I say they did this great and then I repeat that they did something great. And what tends to happen, I think, is I'm miscommunicating my own way because people start to just hear the good stuff. They get to Hello, thank you so much for tuning in to my video about providing feedback to your team as a fitness leader. Now, as most of you know, I oversee a large team of group fitness instructors as well as private Pilates instructors. And I work thankfully with other leaders in the industry as well as here at the Pro Club uh, with the team and providing feedback consistently so that we're touching base with our instructors on a private level and as a global level to the entire team on how we can improve as a team together as well as how we can improve individually. And I will be the first to say, uh, well not the first to say, I'm sure someone said this before, but I have to just get out there that I've heard from other managers, I've heard from presenters, I've been around fitness leaders in the industry and listened to their podcasts and read their books. And everyone seems to have a different take on providing feedback to their team. And while every single one is very useful and important, I don't think any of them are set in stone the best way to communicate to someone on how they can improve in teaching their class or teaching their private clients. So what I would like to do is simply just explain to the people who may be listening or watching this, listening to this or watching this and our group fitness instructors um, who are trying to understand how us managers feel or leaders feel when we're giving feedback to our team, or simply if you're a group fitness instructor or uh, sorry, a group fitness manager or leader and you are feeling the same issues as me at times where it's really difficult to get through to people what we're trying to convey to them when we ask them to tweak and improve their classes or their fitness experiences. So what I'd like to say first is that for those of you who have received feedback, whether you're a manager or a fitness instructor, we should have all received feedback by this time in our career. I have to say that it's never easy. So what I would love instructors to remember and know is that giving, it's not like I wake up in the morning and I'm so excited to tell someone to fix this, this, and this. So it's not something that as managers and leaders, I necessarily, I myself don't always look forward to it. I am happy to provide it because I know I've had the experience and the knowledge and have seen and heard from members and participants and what they enjoy about a certain instructor or a certain format. And I know as I'm taking their class, experiencing their class or their session, I know what I'm enjoying. And so I'm, I try my best to convey that in from the, coming from the best place possible. So I just wanna throw out there that if you do receive feedback from your manager or if it's happening on a consistent basis or if it's even not happening on a consistent basis and it happens every once in a while or even once a year when they get the chance to sit down with you, just be appreciative of it because we don't necessarily enjoy putting that pressure on ourselves to give you feedback. So just know that we're not just trying to do it to be mean. We're, I, I know that I'm always doing it from a place to help someone be successful, to help their format be successful, to help their class be successful. Because ultimately it's so much easier as a manager if I keep that class great and packed and full and that instructor happy in that one spot because then I don't have to change anything. So it's just feedback, it's just feedback. So I wanna know, I wanna just throw that out there and I want you all to know as well that I'm always learning how to communicate with people. I think it's something that everyone should be learning because every person you speak to and communicate with, whether it's a good thing, a bad thing, an emotional thing, anything, it is difficult and everyone responds differently to the way you communicate with them. So I feel like as a manager, the first strategy you need to do to improve your ability to give feedback to your team is to really understand your team. Who are you working with? How do they respond to certain ways of communication? Do some people absolutely love, love, love email? Are they better about reading something out versus, and then responding and having time to think about their answer or think about the, the questions or the feedback at hand? Or are they that kind of person who really needs to be stopped in their tracks and 
one-on-one, -on -one, of course in a private location you're giving someone feedback always privately, but one-on-one -on -one, maybe they really need that feedback one-on-one. -on -one. They need you to look them in the eye and have it, they need to see your face to, to give that feedback. And I ultimately try to do both with my team. Because no matter what, I know it's nice to get the feedback again and have it a little more outlined because if someone tells me in person how to fix something, I'm gonna forget something or I'm going to highlight too many of the good things that they said versus the constructive feedback they gave me. So that's personally, that's me. So as a manager, really get to know your team, get to know your people. But the two strategies I recommend are verbal as well as follow-up email. There are times where I don't have time to do verbal because they're wrapping up their class, they have to head out and I don't have time to talk to them without having it happen in front of a member. So I will say, I have feedback for you in that moment and I'll say, you know what, thank you so much for having me in class. Have a great day, I know you have to get going, but I have some feedback to you. I'll just follow you up, follow up with you really quick via email. And then that way you give them the chance to know that something's coming and you also are able to have something in writing, which I really appreciate because even if I just look up their name in my email or if I have a way of saving it in their file, what feedback I've given you or given them, I have something to also look back on to see what I had given them in the past so I can see if they really have improved on it. Um, so that's important a way of giving feedback is know who you're talking to, know what they like, know what they need. And if there is someone who doesn't love email, maybe you don't give it to them right away and you just, or haven't, they haven't reacted well to that give them that wait, 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 and give them that personal feedback. Put it on your calendar, do it in a way that you can in a professional manner. Then uh, another thing to, um, to understand as a group fitness instructor that, um, that when you're getting the feedback, that you're, hopefully your manager is doing it in a way that it's coming from a great place, but there's nothing worse than not getting feedback. So what you should remember as an instructor is that your manager most likely is giving you feedback because they believe in you. And like I said, if you have a great instructor in a great spot, you're gonna do whatever you can to maintain that's the success of that instructor because it's a lot more work to change the format and to tweak the, the schedule. So as an instructor, just remember that. So here are my strategies. I have four strategies on giving feedback. Of course, do it verbally, via email, do it in both ways if you can. I know we don't have, all have the time and all the time in the world, but these are my four strategies. Number one, and this is like an umbrella overall, especially when it's in person, you can show this better, but what the number one rule I have for giving feedback is to make sure, and I have to check myself, I have to have self-awareness, is to make sure that it's coming from a great place. It's coming from your heart. It's coming from you, again, wanting them to do their best. It's not coming from you maybe ha are taking their class after a few months and you gave them a bunch of feedback before and they didn't implement a single thing. Be really careful with how you handle that because I know how frustrating that can be. And it may be, and it, instead of attributing that to them not listening, try to attribute it to your not communicating clearly. So that's tough. But that also takes me to my second point. So while you wanna make sure that you're giving every word should be coming from a good place. The next thing I want you to work on as managers in giving feedback that I've had to really work on is I, like I said, I'm uncomfortable with giving feedback at times, depending on the instructor and I don't quite know how they're gonna take it. I tend to sandwich everything. So I give them a great thing that they did and then I give them the not so great thing. Then I finish with something great. And then I talk about something else I'd like them to fix. And then I say they did this great. And then I repeat that they did something great. And what tends to happen, I think, is I'm miscommunicating my own way because people start to just hear the good stuff. They get just hear what they want to hear. So I need to be better about keeping it clear and concise and make that more constructive feedback come from a great place without sugarcoating it all so that it just disappears. So that's something I'm really working on and I think that's something managers might need to work on as well. If they're uncomfortable with it, they start to put too much icing on that cake and before you know it, they aren't getting any of the cake, they're only tasting the icing. And then you're throwing, then you're going around and around in circles just because you're not being clear. The third thing I'd like to talk about is try your absolute best as a manager to 
to give no more than two or three things. So my max I will give someone as far as feedback, constructive feedback is three things because they're totally not gonna remember and that's too many things. Anything beyond three, three is kind of like the magic number. Three strikes and you're out. Three strikes you get to give them and then you have to take a break. So no more than three things. You have to pick and choose when you're in the class experiencing it and you're getting ready to give that feedback you have to pick and choose what you think is most valuable. So three things, no more than three things, anytime you give them feedback. Doesn't mean that next time you choose three different things, that's totally fine, but only three things in that one moment. And then the last but not least of the four things and strategies in giving someone feedback are to ask questions. So instead of being the one with all the answers, instead of being the one who says, this is what I think you should do. This is what you need to do. This is what they think you should do. This is what I've seen it does well in classes. This is what I suggest. Take a moment to come up with your own feedback and then ask them questions. So instead of giving them the feedback of your music was not ideal for this class, you really need to make sure that it's increasing and decreasing at this moment and you could have I would have loved some better cool down music. If you're giving them feedback about their music, Maybe instead of giving them all that information, you simply ask, how do you find your music? How do you, what resources do you use in finding your music? Because they could be going the old school route of finding CDs and then putting them on their computer and then, and they may not have a clue on how easy and, and diverse music is to find now, um, now the resources we have as instructors. So take this time if possible to ask questions versus give them feedback right away. Because if you take the time to ask the question, they have the opportunity to answer that question, explain themselves a little bit. They might even answer it themselves. You might say, how did you plan your warm up?" And they go, oh, you know, I really didn't plan it very much. And then guess what? That's when you get to say, well, let's make sure we work on that. Let's work on planning the warm up." So I just wanna recap once again for everybody, the, three, the four strategies are, no matter what, make sure whatever you're saying is coming from a great place a good place, a supportive place, a kind place. Two, work on sandwiching. I know sandwiching can be a tool in itself, but try to avoid sugarcoating everything because sometimes people only hear the good instead of the constructive. Third, narrow your choice of feedback to no more than three things, two to three things. Maybe it's even, if it's even just one thing, it doesn't matter. And then last, but certainly not least, ask questions versus go into your answers or your solutions right away ask them questions, ask them um, questions, not necessarily in a way that's obviously leading them to, to not be successful, but strategic questions. So remember instructors, it's not our favorite thing to do as managers to give feedback. It's not like we're again, waking up in the morning going, I can't wait to tell this instructor that I really wish they would do this. It's not that enjoyable to us. We want to be able to just enjoy your classes. We're kind of cursed. It's really hard for us to go to a class and get to enjoy it 100% because we want to provide you with the tools to make your class better, just as much as we would love your feedback and guidance on being a better leader and an instructor ourselves. So thank you for tuning in. I hope that was helpful and I'll see you guys later.